Well, let's take a, sh a crack at answering that very first question, instantaneous, finding instantaneous velocity. And I want to do that by returning to this, this question of mine. So remember what happened. I was on this, this mountain bike ride, and I went for a 30-mile ride, and 20 miles into it, there was this sign that said 20 miles per hour. And just to show you, because the crew wanted to see this again. So here's, here's how it goes. And the question is, how fast was I going at the very instant I crossed that mark? So now watch it. Here I go. Oh, sort of fell off there a little bit, but I got a little tired. I have to admit, I'm a little bit old. Anyway, let me remind you that the time I did that in one and a half hours. We know time. We know information about distance. We want rate. OK, well, we saw in the last discussion that, well, rate equals distance over time. Now, I'm not going to change that at all, because folks, the truth is rate does equal distance over time. But I want to be a little bit more clear on that point. Because actually, what rate is is the change in the distance you've traveled divided by the change in time, right? How far you actually traveled is actually a change in how far you've gone. And, and how, how long you've traveled is actually a change in the time. So technically, and of course, you knew that already. So you're saying, gosh, why is he going on about that? But I just want to make that point clear that actually when I say that, that rate equals distance over time, what I really mean is that rate equals the change in distance divided by the change in time. OK, now we actually have a really neat way of writing that. When we want to talk about change, we use the Greek letter delta. Isn't that exciting? So in fact, what I want to think about and what I'd like you to think about is actually this fact, that rate equals the change in distance divided by the change in time. It's the exact same thing as this. The delta looks sort of scary. But don't, don't think of it as being scary. And don't think of it as like a, a symbol, because then you might say, gee, delta over delta. I can cancel. Well, no, don't, don't, don't think about that. Think of this as being the change in distance and then divide that by the change in time. That's all we're up against here. OK, so let's now just throw this one away. That's gone, because we're never going to talk about that again. What we want to do is we want to talk about this one. Well, let's see if we can figure out what the rate was. OK, well, the rate equals the change in distance. Well, what was the change in distance? Well, I started here and I ended here. Well, that was 30 miles. It was a long bike ride. It really was. So the rate would equal the change in distance, which is 30 miles, divided by the change in time. Well, how long was I traveling? Well, for one and a half hours. So I have to divide this by one and a half. Now, you could write one and a half. You could write uh, 1.5. I'm actually going to write it as one big fraction. And I guess that fraction would be 3 halves. So I'm going to divide this whole thing, it's going to look really complicated here, by 3 halves. And that's the rate. Now, how do you find this? Well, let me just remind you of some of the little stuff from, from algebra here. What do you do? If I'm dividing by a fraction, what I, what I was taught was that you invert and multiply. So actually, if you watch this, I'll show you exactly how I think about it. I take this fraction down here, and I invert it, whoop, and I multiply it. So if I actually write that out, what I see is 30 multiplied by, and if I invert that, I see 2 thirds. So I'd see this times 2 thirds. And you'll notice I can do a little bit of canceling. I can cancel this 3, make that 1, and make this a 10. And then 10 times 2 equals 20. So 20, what are my units? Well, miles per hour. So 20 miles per hour. So maybe I, I didn't break the law. Well, actually, we haven't answered the question yet. Because what we actually found was my rate over this entire journey, this long, long journey. But you see, I still don't know how fast I was going at that instant. You see, for example, I could have done the following. I could have started off and started sprinting, you know, just really wanted to do well. And then, you know, I got tired. You know, I'm so old. And so then I started, like, you know, just pedaled along, barely moving at, like, you know, five miles an hour. But when you average out that, you know, 70 miles an hour starting and then the five miles an hour way at the end, it turns out it averaged out to 20 miles an hour. So what we actually found was the average 
velocity, or my average rate of change. You see that? By looking at the entire distance and then dividing by the entire time, I found out how fast I was going on average. That doesn't tell me what happens at that particular point. So we're still stuck. However, let's celebrate, we can find average velocities and rates. All you do is take the change in distance and divide it by the change in time. The problem, of course, as I mentioned, was that finding these kind of rates, those are average rates. Doesn't tell me what's going on at this point. What we want to find out is we want to find out the instantaneous rate of change. The rate of change at that one instant. Not over the whole trip, at that instant. Was I breaking the law? Okay, so how would I do that? Well, let's try to use the formula once again. 